Hello and welcome back to a new episode from us here at Best TV. With rapidly rising electricity prices in many countries across the world, it's getting more and more expensive to charge your EV. Some of the EV skeptics are now telling us it's cheaper to drive diesel? We certainly don't think so here, but let's go a step further. We think that it's possible to drive your EV for free. Maybe, just maybe, even make money off it. Stick around for the details. My name is Martin Lee. If you haven't done so already, hit subscribe down there and the like button and leave a comment below with your thoughts as well. Okay, let's do a 30 second run through of the basics here, just in case you're new to electric vehicles. Then we'll start getting on to what you're really here for, and that is free charging. Today we're talking about fully electric vehicles. They don't have any engines, they don't burn any fossil fuels, they have a big old battery and at least one electric motor, sometimes more, that drives the wheels using energy stored in a battery pack. To put energy in the battery, you have to charge it up, and a car like a Tesla Model 3 Long Range has around a 75 kilowatt hour battery. That's the capacity in energy. It's the EV equivalent of saying my petrol car holds 50 litres of fuel. And that Tesla will take you about 300 miles, depending on how you drive it, on a charge. So, let's say you pay 30 cents a kilowatt hour for your electricity. Now, uh, some people are saying, hang on a minute, that's cheap, but bear with me. Uh, multiply that by the capacity, 75 kilowatt hours. And yeah, you've just paid 22.50 for a full charge. Cheaper than driving a combustion, but, 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 but we can do better. Destination charging. In other words, AC charging normally somewhere that you're heading to, maybe to do some errands or chores, some shopping, some leisure activities. Often that can be free and those places make that charging free to attract your business. That self-explanatory destination charger that you're going to. Hotel car parks, a good one. Restaurants, another really good one. The gym, <laughs> I, I don't go there very often. But yeah, places like that can have seven or 11, often faster kilowatt AC chargers. An overnight charge at your hotel would fully charge many EVs. Some workplaces also have free charging. Now they can be very, very useful and dependable as long as you have spaces dedicated for particular staff or maybe you're sharing the charging. People typically park up for, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, ten hours or more uh, at work. So you can be charging all day while you are working. That means uh, you can put slower AC chargers into things like car parks where cars are going to be uh, parked up for a long time. You haven't got a DC rapid charge them. A Model 3 parked up for eight hours in a regular domestic circuit, depending on the voltage where you live, is maybe even going to put 60 miles back in that thing. That covers many people's needs with a little spare to get them through the weekend. All right, that's been pretty basic so far. Let's start making this interesting. Of course, this won't apply to everyone, but it's becoming more and more common, me being one of them. Let's talk about people that have solar panels on the roof of their home. I have some on the house over there and some above the garage here. Uh, in the summer, this time of year, I'm recording this in the winter at the minute, but it's not so sunny in the Northern Hemisphere. But in the summer, I get a good six months of charging my car for free. Some of the energy coming from the solar panels, and yes, I know I have paid for the solar panels, so it's not completely free. But now that I've bought them, once the house has been taken care of and the electricity is being used to run our house, rather than feeding back into the grid or our home storage battery, we charge the car. So it is effectively free. I have about six kilowatts of solar on our house and on a sunny day. Uh, that is maxing out our inverter and the energy is going all the way back into the car. Yep, the fridge is on, the freezer's on, we're making cups of tea and coffee all day, and there's still loads of surplus to charge the car. So I have a kind of car charger that will do that, will divert excess solar to the vehicle. And maybe we will then put some load in the house or hey, make a cup of tea or coffee. It'll then pause charging the car and then go back to charging the car when there is once again a surplus of electricity. So over the course of a couple of hours, I can put two, three, four, five kilowatt hours into my car. I can add 15, 20, 30 miles a day without really doing anything, just the sun shining in the sky. 
let's go further. There is another way that's starting to be seen with the rollout of smart metering. An example that happened here in the UK, now not lately because of the European energy crisis, but at times when the energy prices have gone negative, that's the wholesale price of electricity, I'm with an electricity provider that will then pass that on. So I can be charged. Hmm. My particular energy company will track the wholesale price of what they're paying for electricity. But if there's a real surplus, perhaps on a, a very windy or sunny day, then it's cheaper to pay me to charge my car than it is to turn off the generation. So actually, I'm being paid to charge my car. No one comes around to your house with a petrol or diesel car and pays you to drive your car. Uh, unless you're an Uber driver, I suppose. And now let's get really deep into something that we call energy arbitrage. Buying and selling electricity. You can become an electricity company just by owning an EV, having a smart meter, and getting involved in that trading on the grid. Now, this all happens in the background. You haven't got to be super involved in this. As more and more EVs end up on the road, what they're being used for is a source of stored electricity. So that in the afternoon, typically when everyone gets home from work and puts on the oven and cooks their dinner, and often when it's dark, puts the lights on and the heating, then we can pull a little bit of electricity from those parked up cars on our driveway. Not too much, five or 10% in case you're gonna go somewhere, but you can set the level. And for doing that, by selling electricity back to the grid, when it's very expensive for the electricity companies to buy it wholesale, they can make a bit of money, you can make a bit of money. And at two o'clock in the morning, when there's loads of excess generation capacity, you can then recharge your car for free, sometimes for a reduced rate. And that all happens in the background with the trials that have been happening around the world right now. So not only can you drive your EV for free, you can literally get paid for driving your EV. And there's loads of commercial cases where this works as well. Things like school buses are emerging as a real contender. They have huge batteries. Something like the Lion Electric Company's Type-C school bus has a 210 kilowatt hour battery. It's mega, has 150 miles of range. But you know, a school bus pretty much does the same route day in, day out. And you can pretty easily track with things like weather predictions exactly how much energy will be used on a daily basis. And so when those vehicles aren't being used on the school run, they're back at the depot during the day and overnight, they can be discharging to the grid. And then when they need to recharge, they can do that at times when it's cheaper overnight. They can be charged with free excess electricity from solar panels on the roof of schools and depots. After all the kids are dropped home, the buses go back and plug in to those bi-directional chargers and any of that spare energy goes back into the grid when it's needed. Trials around the world have seen schools actually making money out of going to clean green electric school buses. So that's enough for us today. It might have seemed like a bit of a clickbait title at the beginning. Can you really drive for free? Can you even make money out of driving an EV? But the solutions are here and they're working already. And some of them in trial phases in certain locations around the world are proving that this is very much on the cards in the next few years. The tech is there already and it's just a question of implementing it now. But we want to know what you think. Leave us a comment below. Is this something that would convince you to go electric? And if you have gone EV already, is this something that you'd like to get involved in if there was a trial in your area? Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.